So I just came to talk to the game changers and to the change angels who are willing to confront any part of you that's not speaking to your madly, wildly amazing future. I stand here in my greatness. I own my life. I own my brilliance. I am bold. I am courageous. I'm perfect in my imperfection. This is my time. This is my time. I'm bright enough. I'm old enough. I'm young enough. I've experienced enough. I'm wise enough. I understand that I am enough. Breathe. Own it. Own it. In order to achieve greatness, you must first believe you can. What's the biggest challenge that most of these individuals have? What's the common challenge? Believe. That- they don't believe, man. You know, it's it's uh, it's all mental, and people don't get it. You know, everybody wants to say, okay, well, here go ten steps to. Okay, Lewis said do eight. Et said do nine. You know, this person says this is twelve steps, and everybody's trying to get the steps without the mentality. You got this. I believe in you. When somebody says, no matter what happens, whether it succeeds or fails, I'm going to be by your side. That's when I have the confidence to do difficult things. Wow. So it's the people in my life. You should recognize the potential in yourself and love yourself enough to make the changes that produce the best possible version of yourself. Or how do you overcome self-doubt? How do you overcome self-doubt? Help someone else overcome self-doubt. Love that. Overcome self doubt by helping. Like, and it's not a selfish thing. I'm only helping you so I can. You have to genuinely love and commit to the person. So it's not the car, the house, the whatever. It is that internal goal, that internal why. And so for me, I just think that's it. Like that, like you ah, it's just mm. it's something within it. You mm. gotta pull it out. And so it's easy when you have a why, a purpose. I'm doing it for this, I'm doing it for that. It's easy to get up and get going. But if it's just for a car, what happens, Louis, when you get the car? Because you can buy it. What happens when you get the house and you can buy the house? The only reason you're not the best right now is because you don't believe you're the best now. You can learn all the techniques in the world. If you don't believe in yourself, it won't happen for you. You have got to stand up to that voice. You've got to sell yourself every day on your abilities, on what you're doing, on the goal that you want to reach. You've got to sell yourself every day, every day, every day. According to your level of belief, it will manifest itself in what you're doing. Whatever we have right now, whatever we're demonstrating in our lives is a result of what we believe subconsciously that we deserve. And part of increasing that belief level is that you have got to convince yourself every day. I believe I'm the best there is. I ain't apologizing for it to anybody. I I think I'm the best thing since sliced bread. If you can't do it, you scratch, claw, and even die trying. So many people are waiting. You're you're waiting for things to be perfect. You're waiting for everyone to get themselves together. You're waiting for someone to invite you into the room. You're waiting for someone to give you a seat at the table. You're waiting for someone to validate your gift. You're waiting for someone to call your name. You're waiting for someone to give you the opportunity. You're waiting for everything to line up. You're waiting for all the situations to come together perfectly. And I'm telling you, you cannot wait. You got to start working right now. Depression is not waiting for you to get it together. 
poverty's not waiting. Poverty's not waiting for the perfect moment, for the convenient time to get on you. No, 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 no. Poverty will just roll up on you and disrupt your entire life. Fear's not waiting. Stress is not waiting. Your bills are not waiting. And if fear is not going to wait to attack you, then you can't wait to attack it. If stress is not waiting to attack you, you can't wait to attack it. Whatever is in your life that's trying to bring you, it is not waiting. So you cannot wait. You have got to step up now. I'm telling you, if you're waiting for your degree before you can build a legacy, you're waiting for your father to tell you that he loves you before you can start building legacy. You mean you're waiting for there to be perfect peace in our country before you start building your legacy? You're waiting for everything to line up before you start working on your legacy. No, you can't do that, man. You gotta start working now. You gotta start building legacy now. You gotta start taking care of things now. You gotta get in your position now. You gotta get your life together now. You gotta take this thing seriously now. You gotta start doing it now. Now is the time to start building your marriage. Now is the time to start teaching and investing in your kids. Now is the time to start piecing your money together and getting yourself out of debt. Now is the time to start pursuing something greater. Now is the time to start building the vision that God put in your heart. Now is the time to start saving up for the home. Now is the time to start making those investments in yourself. You cannot wait. Don't wait another day. Don't wait another minute. Don't wait another moment. Now is your time time how long are you going to complain about what you don't have how long are you going to complain about who didn't do it and who didn't take care of you and who didn't call you and who don't like you and what they said and what they think who cares what they think who cares what they said this is not about them this is about me. This is about what God wants to do in me. This is about the legacy that he wants me to build. This is about the impact he wants me to make. Why am I going to put my legacy to the side in order to appease a person who don't know who I really am? You got to get to a place where you recognize but I'm not just here passing time. I'm not just here just having fun. But I'm here to build legacy. I'm here to make things happen. I'm here to change the world. Now is your time. When you go to God and ask God to give you a cake, God doesn't give you a cake. God gives you eggs on Monday. He gives you flour on Tuesday. He gives you milk on Wednesday. And he gives you some sugar on Thursday. And you go to God and say, hey, God, what's up? I asked for some cake. And God said, look, I gave you eggs on Monday. I gave you flour on Tuesday. I gave you milk on Wednesday. I gave you some sugar on Thursday. And you're saying, God, no, I want cake. But what you don't realize is God did give you cake. But God doesn't give you a finished product. God just gives you the ingredients that you have to work. And when you look at your life right now, what you got to realize is that you don't have a finished product. What you have is ingredients. And it is your responsibility to work the ingredients that you have to make the cake that you really want. Too many people are saying, when am I going to get my cake? And God is saying, hey, look what's in your hand. You got enough milk. You, you, you got the eggs. You got the sugar. You got the flour. It's your responsibility now to mix the things in your life together to produce the legacy that you really want. When it comes to legacy, you have to recognize that you have enough right now to build the legacy that you really want. Oh, I know you're looking at your life and saying, oh, this is not much. And I know you're looking at everything and you're waiting for something to happen. But I promise right now you have enough wisdom to build legacy. Right now you have enough gifting to build legacy. 
Right now, you have enough relationships to build legacy. Right now, you have enough energy to build legacy. Right now, you have enough money to build legacy. And you can't wait around and, and hope and wait for the day everything comes together. You have to start building legacy right now. As long as you keep thinking you're deficient, you'll never make any progress. And I need you to stop looking at what you don't have. And I need you to start looking at what you do have. We all spend time thinking about what we don't have. Oh, oh, I wish I had that job. Oh, I wish I had that car. Oh, I wish I had that person's spouse. Oh, I wish I had their life. But the truth of the matter is you got to stop looking at what you don't have and you got to start looking at what you do have. What do you have right now that can help you build the legacy that you want? Notice I said that you have enough right now to build your legacy. Let me say it again. You have enough right now to start building your legacy. I say that because we spend so much time building other people's legacy and ignoring our own. Some of us spend our entire lives making sure that our employer's legacy is good. Some of us spend our entire lives making sure that a politician's legacy is great. Some of us spend our entire lives making sure our favorite singer, our favorite rapper, that their legacy is good. But you got to get to a place where you recognize that it's not just about the celebrity's legacy or the singer's legacy or the politician's legacy. It's about your legacy, that your life matters, your voice matters, your name matters. I think I'm, I'm glad that you love your boss, but you got a legacy to build. I'm glad that you love all your friends, but you can't spend your life building up your friend's legacy and tearing down your own. Today is the day. Now is the moment. Now is the time to start building your legacy. I don't know about you, but I lose my keys all the time. I always lose my keys. And one day I lost my keys and I started complaining, where are my keys? And I remember calling out to my wife and said, sweetie, hey, have you seen my keys? She said, no, I haven't seen keys. I said, sweetie, I need my keys. And then my wife said, sweetie, check your pockets. Now when she said this, I was insulted. What you mean, check my pockets? Why would I have to check my pockets? I, and don't, don't you? Don't you think I would know if I had my keys and my pocket? So you just think I'm dumb. Okay, so you just think I don't know nothing. And then guess what? I checked one of my inner, inner pockets. And guess what had happened? I found out that I had my keys way down deep in my own pocket. And I started laughing and my wife started laughing. And what I realized is that it is possible that you could be looking for something that you already have. It is possible that you are looking for something that's already in your pocket. It's possible that you are looking for a relationship that you already have. I know you think if I knew her, I knew him, but can you do me a favor? Can you open up your own phone contacts and can you start looking through your phone contact? Because you might find that the person that you need to be linked up to, you already have their number, but because you're not looking in your own pocket and you're waiting for something to show up, you don't know what you already have in the midst of you right now. Oh, I know you're waiting, you're, you're waiting, you're waiting, but what if? The knowledge that you need is in your pocket. Yeah, you you got enough books on your shelf right now to change the world. You you keep going to buy new books, but what about the old books? What if you already have the knowledge and the information that you need to start the business? What if you already have the knowledge and the information to get over that hurdle? What if you already have the knowledge and the information, but because you're waiting, you are waiting for everything to come together. What if you already have the thing in your pocket right now? What's in your pocket that you're overlooking? What is it that you're searching for? What is it that you're waiting for? Maybe it's already in your pocket. Go ahead. You know what? Let them doubt you. Go ahead. Let them overlook you. Go ahead. Let them ignore you. 
Go ahead. Let them slam the door in your face. Let them not invite you because that's the fuel that you need to get in your closet with God, to get in the cave and start working, to get in the dungeon and start moving some stuff. That's exactly what you need because today they may be overlooking you, but tomorrow they're going to need from the legacy that you built. Now is the time to start building your legacy. Now is the moment to start making your impact. You're never going to get anywhere being lazy. But I would tell you that hard work is what stands out. I pursue number one at all times. But you have to be able to look at yourself. I always worked hard. I was never lazy. I was always somebody that believed in hard work. And when you work hard and you have that sense of pride, it goes right out the window if you utilize your efforts in the wrong fashion. Mm -hmm. But when you do what's right, and it's based off of that effort that you put in, then you feel good about it because you took care of your responsibilities. Mm -hmm. Then you can go play. Can't do the playing before any of that. Stuff. Right. If I never try, if I don't go for this, where's that gonna leave me? Don't be scared to bet on yourself. You're going to be scared anyway, because it is scary. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, betting on yourself isn't always leaving. Betting on yourself is believing in you. Knowing who you are, what mm -hmm. you're worth. Having an idea about it anyway. And willing to work towards that, to validate that reality. That's betting on yourself. Right. Whatever decision emanates from that is based off of you looking at you and saying, I'm going for it. When you don't do that, what you have done is refrain from challenging yourself to be all you could be. You should be scared if you're clueless. You should be scared if you're ignorant to what you want to do, why you want to do it, and how you intend to go about achieving whatever aspirations you may have. If you're going to overcome that fear at some point, knowledge is a part of the equation. What is winning? I challenge any human being alive. And if you can't do it, you scratch, claw, and even die trying. It was about striving to do whatever you could to be the best that you can be. That is what I believe makes me the best. It's my commitment mm. to excellence for the collective whole. I believe I'm the best there is. I ain't apologizing for it to anybody. If you don't have self-confidence, here's what you have. You have a really bad reputation with yourself. You have built a habit of not keeping the promises you make to yourself. We've all heard this before. You need to believe and know that your one decision, one relationship, one meeting, one book, one thought, one something away from a completely different life. Here's how I built what I would call almost superhuman confidence in spite of my insecurity. Think about that. Superhuman confidence in spite of my insecurity. It's an effort play. If you don't have self-confidence, you've never kept the promises you make to yourself. Check that box. If you have self-confidence, you've started to keep the promises you make to yourself. If you want to have superhuman self-confidence, you keep the promises you make to yourself and one more. So if I'm going to get up and I'm going to work out, and I'm going to do 10 reps in the gym, I do one more. Wow. If I'm going to do 45 minutes on the treadmill, I do one more. If I want to make 10 contacts in a day, I do that and one more. If I'm going to tell my daughter I love her every day, I'm going to do that and one more. Wow. Because in life, we don't get our goals, we get our standards long term. And so if your standard is one more, starts what starts to happen is you go, I'm willing to do things other people aren't willing to do. And I combine that, that I have great faith, great associations, and I intend to help people. This is a formula to build wonderful self-confidence and never lack humility when you have it. Never link your confidence to your ability. 
that's predicated on your abilities or your achievements, you're always going to be chasing it. But if you link your confidence to your intentions, mm. man, you have beautiful intentions. And that is something I knew about me. I know I have a good heart. And all of us, we run around carrying these bags of, I'm not qualified because I made this mistake. I had this bankruptcy. This relationship didn't work. I did this thing you don't know about. I'm so ashamed of. That's why you're qualified. That's the thing that qualifies you. Yeah. The humanness in you. You are the only human being with your combination of gifts that you were given, whatever they are, and your experience. Mm -hmm. And real human beings help real human beings by being vulnerable and yeah. transparent, saying, I know where you are. I've messed up worse. I've made greater mistakes. I felt worse. I know that depression. I know that anxiety. I know that shame. I know what that feels like. You're one away, one relationship, one meaning, one person, one thought away from changing your life. I get it. The pain is unbearable. You keep playing it back in your head over and over and over. You keep trying to see where you went wrong. The situation is on repeat. People are going to talk anyway. So you may as well do what makes you happy. And now some people are going to call you a loser. Some people are going to make fun of you for failing. Some people are going to count you out. Say you will never amount to anything. Call you weak. What you going to do? Are you going to prove them right? Or are you going to prove them wrong? Let them think you're weak. Stop going back and forth with people who don't deserve your time or your attention. If you have been announcing your plans, do me a favor. Stop talking and start showing no need for you to say what you're going to do. Just do it. I learned the hard way that everyone who is around me is not for me because everyone doesn't want the best for me. And so I had to learn to keep things to myself until I have already done the work. Are you going to show them that failure doesn't define who you are? Are you going to show them that failure is a necessary lesson on the path to success? Are you going to show them that you're a beast in this game? What you going to do? You got to get hungry. You got to get ready. It's time to get to work and show them all. Show them you're a different animal. Let them talk. You know, Denzel Washington talks about consistency, the importance of consistency. You got to put in the work, you got to go for it. But you have to have consistency. Because without consistency and putting in the work, the dream is nothing but a dream. Right. And I get all of that. But you have to be able to look at yourself. And you have to be able to be honest with yourself and know when you mess up. Because when you mess up, it's going to catch you. Mm. And what I mean when I say it's going to catch you is at some point, you're going to look at you and you're going to say, I didn't try. I didn't go for it. But I often tell people this, particularly when it comes to relationships. Relationships come and go. Things don't work out sometimes. But there is nothing on earth worse than when you know you're the reason it messed up. Mm. See, if somebody mistreats you, if somebody that you love don't want you no more, but you wanted them and you treated them right and blah, 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 but it didn't work out, it hurts. But you'll be fine. Yeah. Most people will be fine. When you're not fine, 
is when you know it was you. You messed up. You messed up. You heard that. Everybody you've run across has had apprehension about who they are, where they are, where they're going, etc. But really, the most important thing it requires like a literal look in the mirror. Mm. Asking yourself how you will feel if you never try. Cuz there's no one that could become all they could be without looking at this absolutely what is your definition of greatness my definition of greatness sustained excellence anybody could be great for a moment anybody could have their moment in the sun but who you truly truly are at a particular craft this whatever is done over a sustained period of time to me first take being number 1 is not what i'm proud of i'm proud of the fact that it's been 11 years mm. straight mm. that's what i'm proud of and the fact that i was able to do that at a continuous level that means i had to put my head down and just be about the business and do the work I'm brilliant because I know I'm not. Mm. I steal from those who are. Mm. And I learn from them and I disseminate that level of brilliance that I got from other people always giving them credit. Number 1. Number 2. Here's the biggest thing. I think I'm the best because I think about the company. How can I help? How can I make my bosses more money? How can I get some of it? That mentality That's a game is what makes me the best. That's a game changer. Because what I'm saying is, I'm not saying I'm the best because I articulate myself on television better than anybody else. Even though I think I work as hard as anybody, but I work more than anybody. Yeah. Or that I got even though I've been number 1 for 11 years in morning television, part of the interruption is number 1 on the ESPN, not me. I'm not those guys. They're the institution. You see what I'm saying? I understand who I am. But what I'm saying is is that you show me what winning is for the brand and I'm going to bust my butt mm. to go and get it for you. I've shown I'm trustworthy. Yeah. That you can trust that I'm going to be at the top or I'm going to go to I'm going to go down swing. <laughs> But there is never a moment that I'm on the air that I don't think about what they want. And a lot of times, it's just like a musician. If you Jay Z, you run a rock nation, you're a billionaire, blah blah blah. Do you make music just for yourself, or do you think about what the audience would want? If everyone could take this in and realize it's about the win-win. When I was playing high school ball. The freshman trying to make the varsity, right? And I wasn't as good yet, but I was tall, so they put me in there, right? Right. I would listen to the coach and say, and complaining about some of the starters who weren't hustling. He said, "We need more hustle. I need you guys diving for balls, jumping mm -hmm. out of bounds." And I was just like, "I'm going to be the hustle guy. I'm going to do what he needs, what he wants, so I can play and try to help him win." And that got me on the team. It's like working for a company. It's like if you can help the company make more money. and show them that they're going to want to continue to support yes. your growth. Yeah. The win-win. So this is for me that's brilliant. And I don't think a lot of people probably think you think that way. They don't. Because if I wasn't interested in making a difference, if I wasn't interested in impacting the lives of others in a positive fashion, they would have not been interested in giving me the time of day. I had to be interested in something greater than myself to wow. get their interest to elevate in me. being as excellent as I could possibly be on a day in day out week in week out month in month out year in year out basis so how do we let go of the past well, we so how do we let go of the past well, we have to create a compelling future in other words you're not going to let go of one thing until you've grabbed onto the uh, next so you have to create a new future you have to create a future and and by the way it's okay that you don't believe all of it initially as long as it becomes repetitive and we begin to take steps towards it right so it's it's it, mm -hmm. for me i still have stuff from my past 
there's still a little part of me that doesn't want to be broke. There's yeah. still a little bit of fear. It's all, I've, but you're you, not broke. Yeah, but, but you've interviewed some of the most <laughs> successful actors and entertainers, so have I. And you get them privately, and sometimes yeah. on your show they go, you afraid it's going to go away? They go, yeah, I am. That's why I work so hard. So there's an element of that that's okay. Mm -hmm. It's creating this vision for your life that's compelling. Can you survive the temporary? And if you can survive the temporary, it says on the other side of temporary pain, you get introduced to your other self. And that other self produces that other life. Uh -huh. And so here's what happens for most of us. We think everything's permanent. And because we think it's permanent, we make permanent decisions based on temporary conditions. Even our bodies, other than our souls, are temporary. But if your body isn't permanent, your problem isn't, your pain isn't, you need to create a different relationship with pain in your life. For most people, their relationship with the pain and the inconvenience is to avoid it. Avoid as so much if you could be, Yeah, but if you could say to yourself, on the other side of this is this other self. The hardest working you've ever been, the most crazy focus you've ever been, was the happiest you've ever been in your life. And the truth of the matter is that most of you don't understand the effort, the time, the focus, the obsessiveness that's required to do something great with your life. But you have to get great and you have to be intentional. You have to be obsessive. Yeah. I know what you put into this. I know what the time is. I know what the relentless pace is. I know what the focus is. I know what you think about. I know this has to be something that's just infectious. And when people get around you, it emanates and there's an energy and there's like, this person's just going to will this to happen. Right. I think just most people dramatically underestimate the amount of obsessive, crazy, relentless focus it takes to be great at something. Yes. And then they go, well, I don't want to be that out of balance or control. Then you don't want to be great. My default personality is uh, insecure. Even today? Even today. Come on. Very much. Really? Very much. How so is my, that default? You wake up and you say, uh, I'm a nobody or what? What's the, um, what's the I story? lack this. I'm fooling everybody. Really? They, if they really knew, you know, I've always tried to disqualify myself. I was bullied as a kid. My dad was an alcoholic. I wasn't a real big guy. Um, I disqualify myself because, you know, the truth is that maybe for a while, everything that I got that was loved when I was a child only came when I achieved something. Mm -hmm. I wasn't good in school. The only thing I was good at was sports. Mm -hmm. So my default is tons of insecurity. I love to beat myself up with mistakes I've made. I did this, I did that. I should have done this, I didn't do that. And I've always thought these mistakes, these weaknesses of mine, disqualify me from being happy or helping people. The confidence part is the thing I'm always going to have to work on. Even I mean, today, even with all the success and the you know the massive show and the big businesses and all the homes and everything that people see, yeah. What yeah. else do you need though to feel more confident? I don't need other things. It's an internal game. The the stuff is really fleeting and temporary. So I, it's not stuff. What needs to happen for me is that I'm most confident when I'm living in my intention, which is to serve. Like, that's a beautiful expression of a man. A real man is capable of real love. Yeah. That's a sign of real strength. And what we do is we gravitate towards the familiar emotions in our life, even if they're not ones that serve us. And I don't think there's negative or positive emotions. I say this in the book. There just are. Yes. Fear isn't negative. It, fear in abundance is negative. Some frustration, some anger is appropriate. It's to the dosage level. And we get these four or five of them. For me, some chaos is okay. It's fun. It's exciting. It's exhilarating, right? But getting it every day, every week, every month, all the time, mm -hmm. chaos is my gateway emotion to the ones I don't want. Chaos gives me stress. Chaos gives me anger. Chaos gives me frustration. Chaos gives me fear. I used to think, well, that's a superpower, though, because I've created all these external... Look what I made. Look, look what, what I did. did. Yeah. And I'm doing it because of that. The truth is I did it in spite of it. You did. And there's a lot of things in our lives that we have linked to our formula, our recipe of success that we hold on to that you've done in spite of those things, not because of those things. But my dad knew I was a dreamer. And my dad would always say, you know, I was one decision away from changing my life the whole time. One choice. And he'd say, Eddie, you're not as far away from these dreams as you think you are. And I'd say, really, Dad? And he'd go, no, you're actually a lot closer than you think. But because you think it's so far away, you behave in accordance with that belief system and it always keeps it that far away from you. If the things most important to you are your worries, fears, anxieties, problems, bills, you will continue to have people, places, and things revealed to you that confirm it. 
My definition of greatness is that you create a life that matches your vision for your life. And that's greatness, no matter what that looks like for you. 